Can I get some believers in the building that know that God is real? To just clap your hands and praise God right now. Come on, I need you to press in and give God a shout of praise. Yeah. Is there anybody in the house that understands that Jesus is in the room? Yeah, he's literally in the room and we should understand that when a king shows up and that when God comes in, he's deserving of your praise. That means that no matter what we're going through, no matter what our issues are, we have to pause for the cause because somebody can be delivered by your mouth. So for the next five seconds, I want you just to open up your mouth and just register your praise in the building. Somebody give him praise. Come on, that's it. That's it. Come on, church. He's worthy. Worthy of the honor. Worthy of the glory. Worthy. We're not worthy. But God is worthy. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of God. Look over at your neighbor and tell him, I'm happy to see you tonight. Look over at your other neighbor and tell him, I'm happy to see you too. Praise God, praise God. I'm so excited to be here tonight. My name is Pastor Resty Collins III, and I have the privilege of cutting up the word with you tonight. How many of you came to hear something from God? Okay. All right, that's good. That's really, really good news um, because I really believe that God wants to speak to us tonight. I believe that God has a word that is going to transform your life. If you came here tonight and you were expecting something from God, let me tell you what happens. Your expectation pulls a word from God. So at the level of your expectation is going to be at the level that God speaks to you tonight. So I want to ask you another question. Do you ex is there anybody expecting a word from God tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm excited to be here. We're going to jump right into our word. The Lord has a powerful word for us tonight. By a show of hands, how many of you have your growth book? All right, all right. That's about half of everybody. How many of you? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may not have it with you tonight, but you purchased your growth book. Let me see your hand. All right, good, 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 good. Today, tonight, we're going to be teaching from our growth book. Today's teaching is coming from today's reading in our daily growth book. And tonight, we're going to be coming from Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 through 48. Very familiar passage of scripture. As a matter of fact, this scripture, this passage used to confuse me when I was younger. I used to get really confused because I would ask God, why is it that you're asking me to do this? You're asking me to turn a cheek when I just got punched in my face. Well, I mean, how, how is it that you're asking me to turn the other cheek when they lied on me? How is it that I can turn the cheek when everybody is speaking ill about me at the Sunday dinner? How do I do that? Well, look at your neighbor and tell them we're going to learn how to do that tonight. The Bible says, Matthew 5, 38 through 48, you have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not resist. Somebody say, do not resist. An evil person, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. <sighs> If you are sued in court 
and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands, somebody say demands, that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. 43, you have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. 46, if you love only those who love you, if you love only those who love you, if you love only your family, right? Here's what the Bible says. What reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you're kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. 48, but if you are to be perfect, even as your father in heaven is perfect. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them the power to turn it around. You see, we have to understand something tonight is that uh, there's a problem that we have in our culture. And the problem that we have in our culture is that our culture is flawed. Our culture is broken down. Our culture is at a place where it's full of hate, full of revenge, full of retaliation, full of all of these things. As a matter of fact, human nature wants to hurt those who hurt them. If you cause me pain, then I want to cause you pain back. How many of you know that it's difficult to deal with people that cause you harm? How many of you understand that sometimes you can look your neighbor in the eye and just at the fact that you look them in the eye, they want to blow your brains out, right? I grew up in school, and where I grew up, a look could cause you to get shot, right? Uh, uh, um, somebody walking up to you and looking at you in your face could cause you to literally go off. But here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 15, that we should look after each other so that none of you falls to receive, fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. We have to understand that it's human nature for us to fight back. It's human nature for us to call back. Look at your neighbor and tell them how good is your clap back game. Right, right. See, 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 what happens is most of the time you've gone to church, you've gone through holy warriors, you've loved God, you know who God is, you've gotten saved, but there's something about the power to be able to say no to your flesh. You see, the flesh is something that the enemy wants to take control of, and so what he does, he allows for you to be in circumstances and problems making you at a place, if you're not careful, at a place where you'll clap back, you'll respond back to somebody, then the next thing you find out, clink, clink, you're in prison. The next moment, you're in a, not, not only are you in prison, here's where you are, you're in the grave. How many understand that the power that you have to tell yourself no in a moment is what you need to understand only comes from the Holy Spirit. It only comes from God. And there are consequences of your bitterness. The corruption for you and all that are around you, it'll corrupt your marriage, it'll corrupt your family, it'll corrupt your children, it'll corrupt your relationships, it'll corrupt your bloodline. How many of you know that you being bitter, that you fighting back, 
You opening up your mouth because somebody doesn't like you can corrupt your bloodline. Now all of a sudden, everybody in your family is bitter, they're upset, they're mad, they're walking around because why? Because you put that seed in your bloodline. The reality is, is this, we know that, and, and here's, here's, here's what the devil knows. The devil knows that you've been molested. The devil knows that they talked about you. The enemy knows that they messed over your life. So what he wants to do is he wants you to retaliate. The retaliation that you give to one person will be the retaliation that comes back to you. Here's what we must understand. That back in biblical times, what would happen is, is that if there was any level of retaliation, if there was any level of offense, there was something that happened in that moment. And here's what happened. Moses set up a law that said that there was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. What that meant was, is if you cut off my hand, I'm cutting off your hand. If you punch me in the face, guess what? I'm punching you right back in the face. If you break my leg, you might as well just stick your leg out because I'm getting ready to break your leg too. And this is something that was an expectation in that moment. The Bible says that there was an eye for an eye. And then in verse 38, uh, it says this. You have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury. Jesus now comes on the scene. He's preaching his first message. The Bible says that this is the mount. This is a sermon on the mount. So he shows up and he is preaching. Who is he preaching to? He's preaching to his disciples, the ones that followed him, the ones that were around him. And here's what he says. He says this, you have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not resist. That word do not resist means don't fight. That means do not oppose. It means don't fend off. Don't defend. Don't try to be right. Don't act like you know it all. Don't go into a place acting as if you're the one that's going to turn, change it and turn it. He says you need to learn how to humble yourself in a moment because if you don't watch yourself, you'll wreck everything about your future. You need to understand that the Roman soldiers, they were at a place where they literally had a right to walk up to Jews in that moment. And even though they didn't do anything, they had the right to cause them and slap them. And here's the thing I want you to understand is that when they slapped him or slapped them, they would slap them with the right hand. Because the left hand was inoperative. And the way that they slapped them was they would slap them backhanded. They would, they would walk up to them and they would backhand them. They would just slap them at will. Why? Because they were not of that kingdom. They were not part of that kingdom place. They were not part of that nation. And I want you to understand that some of you in this building have been backslapped. You've been busted. You've been disgusted. The enemy has slapped you like crazy. And the only reason he slapped you was because you're not part of his kingdom. You showed up and you got back slapped. And so now you're trying to find out, wow, how in the world did this happen to me? Why am I getting beaten like this? Why am I getting messed up like this? Because the enemy is on his job. The question is, are you on yours? You have to learn not to resist. You have to learn this. You have to learn that sometime your enemies are going to push you against the wall. They're going to talk about you. They're going to go crazy. Why? They're going to look at you and say, you don't have the money. You don't have the success. You don't have the education. So I'm going to treat you just like that. Is there anybody in the building that's ever felt like you've taken a back slap in your life? 
Anybody in here that's ever felt like the enemy has been beating you down, uh, making you feel like you are not a child of God? Uh, well, I got good news for you this morning, uh, that no matter how the devil fights me, uh, busts me, hits me, the reality is uh, the Holy Ghost uh, has the power to help me to endure. Your pain and your suffering is only an education in endurance. See, we can't take anything in the church nowadays. Somebody talks about you. Somebody says something about you. And you fall down to the ground. You start crying like a little girl. There's no wimps in the kingdom. Why are you wimping out? Why are you acting like you can't take it? The Bible says uh, that no weapon that is formed against me will prosper. And every tongue uh, that riseth up against me, it shall utterly be condemned. Uh, how many condemners do I have? Uh, how many folks in here uh, that understand uh, that God is getting ready to condemn your enemies. The Roman soldiers, watch this. The Roman soldiers, here's what they do. They walk up to people and they treat them like they're nothing. They treat them like they're just little people in the town. It was the Jewish people. They were discriminated against. They were walking into a place uh, and they felt like nothing. They felt like they were not uh, who the, the society told them uh, that they were supposed to be. Uh, but here's the reality. When you understand who you are in the kingdom, uh, it doesn't matter what your friends think about you. When you understand who you are in God, huh? I may not have your armor, huh? I may not have your money, huh? I may not look like you, huh? I may not talk like you, huh? but there's one thing I have, huh? I got endurance, baby. Huh? So no matter what you do, huh? no matter what you say, huh? no matter where I am, huh? I'm a walk huh? in power, huh? I'm a walk huh? in authority. Knock me out, hit me. Do what you want, because there's somebody that was hit all the way up to Calvary, and his name is... Come on, give him praise right there. We have to understand that life will hit you. Life will bust you. Life will break you. And it will have you all the way down to the ground. It will push you to the point to have you to try to figure out, am I even saved? Does God even love me? Do I know where I'm going? But let me tell you something about a hit. The reality is, is that when God hits you, and when God allows to hit, excuse me, because God's never going to hit you. The only thing he's hitting you with is power. But when the hit comes, here's what you have to do. And there's a Marvel character that used to take and absorb hits. His name was Black Panther. You need to watch this. When Black Panther had a hit, his suit was able to absorb the hit. Some of you need to change your flesh suit and get a spiritual suit. So when the devil comes, bam, I got hit, but I'm still standing. Huh? Bam, the foreclosure happened. Bam, I got divorced. Huh? Bam. Huh? But what God does, huh? God allows me to keep standing, huh? to keep going, huh? because what he did, every hit, gave him power <laughs> oh my god every hit will give you power once you understand who god is there is something called let me go back into my there is something called the law of retaliation whereby a punishment 
resembles the offense committed in kind and degree. It's called, the law was called Lex Talionis in Latin. This was a common law of Moses. Exodus 21 and 24 says this, an eye for an eye and then a tooth for a tooth, a hand for a hand and then a foot for a foot. Romans 12 and 19 says this, dear friends, never take revenge. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's hard to do that. Come on, can we just be honest in here? There's some folks you just want to cut their head off. Come on, stop playing around with me up in here. There's some people that they dog you out so bad that it made you consider to go back to the hood and call Ray Ray. Yo, Ray Ray, we got a problem over here. We got some issues. These folks are bothering me. And at the end of the day, and so you were like, you know what? Saddle up because we got some issues. But how many of you know that you don't have to call on Ray Ray today? You don't need to call Nene or Ray Ray. You don't need to call Jose. You don't need to call Pablo. You don't need to call nobody. The only one. Somebody say the only one. The only one, Shanda, the only one I'm going to call is Jesus. Somebody, anybody, give him praise. Hallelujah. My God. Some things will get you out of character. And the, the, the reality is, is this, is that the enemy wants to get you into a reactionary mode rather than a response mode. Here's what happens. When you react to certain things, you do it out of emotion. Somebody says something to you, now what does emotion do? Emotion pulls in its cousin called pride. Because pride comes before a great fall. And the reality is, many of us have been in a place where we've almost fallen. We've almost messed up. And some of us have messed up because we've allowed pride to step in and we've reacted and not responded. Tell your neighbor, it's time to respond to the devil. I got to respond to his tricks which means I got to create a strategy. And sometimes uh, we are at a place, uh, there's no strategy, and they told you that they're getting ready to come to the house uh, and take something from you, uh, or somebody has just slept with your wife or your husband. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. You got the nine in the drawer. Ready. What? You're coming to do what? And you got the nine and you're ready to take action. And so now it takes God in order to make you not resist. But here's one of those hits. And the reality is uh, we can get hit on the ground uh, where we're on the ground. But here's the reality of what God does. God will allow you to get hit let you be on the ground, blood coming from your face. You're looking at everybody because the Jewish culture, they would have to, in this moment, when they got hit, they would have to stay there on the ground and figure out what they were going to do based on the Roman soldier. Now, here's the other, the other reality. The Roman soldiers would throw their bags on the Jews. They would take all their trash, they would take their baggage, and they would throw it on the Jews. They might be on their way to a wedding. They might have been on their way to a synagogue. They could have been on their way to their kid's house. But the Roman soldier says, hey, get over here. Carry my bags. Take my stuff. I need you to take this. 
I need you to put this on you. And if you don't take it, guess what the next thing that'll happen to you? You're getting locked up. Is there anybody in this place that might be locked up because you couldn't take it? Is there anybody in this place that maybe, just maybe, if you stayed there and took it long enough, uh, that there's a deliverance that's coming uh, on the other side of you taking it? And here's what God says. Here's what he says in the scripture. He says this. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world will love you as one of its own if you belong to it. But you are no longer part of this world. So we know that, but the reality is, tell your neighbor that that hit hurt. Tell your neighbor that the hit hurt me. Yeah, it, it, it hurt me pretty bad. It hurt me bad when I had the foreclosure. Right. It, 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 it hurt me bad huh? when you walked up into my face and I didn't do anything to you, but you excluded me out of everything. Come on. It hurt me pretty bad when you took your hand and slapped me and told me who I'm not and you begin to talk real bad about me. You know that people are your biggest struggle? People are your biggest struggle. That'll be your biggest fight. But it hurt me. It hurt me so bad uh, that I didn't want to get up. Uh, and sometimes the slap will knock you on the ground. Let me get back down on the ground. Uh, the slap will hurt you and hit you. Then it'll drop you to your knees. How can you know that this is the place of deliverance? Yep, you hit me but you hit me to my knees. You hit me, but you hit me to prayer. Yes, you hit me, but you made me fast all the way through this time. You hit me, but you messed me up. You hit me, but it caused me to turn my worship music on at work. You hit me, but what it did, it pushed me. And while I was down, you threw all your junk on me, Roman soldier. You threw all your mess on me. You got to watch those people that the only way they can win is when you're down. There are people that look for people that are down so that they can win. But here's the reality. God says that even though I'm down, even though I'm on my knees, you have to understand I'm standing up in the spirit. You hit me, I'm going to turn the other cheek. And I'm going to give you the other cheek. When you learn how to turn the other cheek, you take control of the situation. Most of us, we thought that turning the other cheek meant that we were weak. But when I'm down, when I'm low, when I don't have it, when God doesn't speak a word to me, it drives me to my knees. But tell your neighbor eventually. Tell your neighbor eventually, eventually I'm going to stand up. Eventually it's about to turn. Eventually God's going to shift it. Why is it shifting? Not because he turned it. I turned it. Oh my God. He turned it after I turned it. You can't let God turn it first. You got to tell that enemy. I know you hit me on the right cheek, but here's the left cheek too. Watch this. The second mile of your life is when you turn it. Why? Because the first mile, I'm obligated to let you beat me down. But tell your neighbor, the second mile's on me. The second mile is on me. As a matter of fact, this second mile, what God's about to do in your life, he's going to let you get hit so bad that while you're down there, you are just preparing for your next level. I'm just preparing. I'm on the ground just calculating. Wow, what is this going to look like? I know I'm not going to be down here forever. Wow, what am I going to live in next? What's God going to do here? There's some things 
that while you're on the ground uh, that you ought not miss uh, because there's endurance on the ground. Uh, there's power on the ground. Uh, there's anointing on the ground. Uh, there's, oh God, the Spirit of God uh, on the ground. Uh, but baby, uh, when you understand who God is, uh, you'll stand up uh, in the face of your enemy uh, with love uh, and say, I love you uh, with an everlasting love. Uh, but I'm getting ready to turn this. I'm getting ready to shift this. You must understand that while you're on the ground, there's something that happens in your life. Anybody ever heard of a second wind? Uh, you see, what, what happens is the enemy wants to think that he's knocked the wind out of you. Anybody ever felt like the wind got taken out of you? In life, you, you, you came home uh, and you didn't know what to do, uh, but the wind got knocked out of you. But let me tell you what happens is that when you are in a place so, so messed up, the, the, the Lord God, what he does, uh, he gives you what's called a second wind. Look at your neighbor, tell him that I'm getting ready to start my second wind. Yeah, there, there, there is a second wind that God's about to blow in my life. God's about to blow. Tell your neighbor God's blowing a second wind. And here's the reality. Not only is he blowing a second wind, you're getting ready to get a second win. W-I-N. Because 2023 was full of losses. But in 2024, somebody in the building is getting your second wind. Which is going to lead you to your second win. My God, my God. Are you are picking up what I'm putting down tonight? The reality is, is this. Is the devil wants you to stop on the first mile. He literally wants you to stop on the first mile. When you stop on the first mile, what happens is you put the control in the hands of your enemy. Your enemy will win. He'll think he's won. He'll think that everything in your life is a failure. But when he comes up against some believers, some people that really believe this thing, some people that really understand who God really is, I don't only understand about him on the mountaintop, but I understand him on the ground. See, and what happens is, if you're able to praise him on the ground, what do you think is going to happen when you get to the mountaintop? Tell your neighbor, I barely made it here tonight. I didn't know how I was going to get here, but the fact is, I got in the room, and if I made it in the room, that means that I qualify for a second wind. Come on, somebody praise him with me right here. Let's go here. I qualify for a new anointing. I qualify for power to hit me. I qualify for all my enemies to know that God is on my side. I qualify for God to get the praise out of my mouth. You need to understand tonight that the enemy tried to blow the wind out of you, but this is the same power that Jesus used when he was walking to the cross. They beat him. They talked about him. They, oh my God, stripped him. They took everything from him, but he didn't stop. Some of you stop too quick. Somebody in the room, I hear that. You stopped too early. You gave up too fast. You thought it was over on the first mile. But God says, you were just getting started. You were just going into a, a zone. Huh? But here's what he says. Huh? That Jesus now on the hill to Golgotha. Can you imagine if he stopped? Can you imagine if he quit? 
Can you imagine him being beaten? Can you imagine him being messed up and hit all, all of the flesh on his back being torn up, torn off? But he goes to the cross. And he goes to the cross. Why? Because God is love. He is Emmanuel with us. He is God with us. And in that moment, God says, if I stop right here and don't reclaim them, the whole world would be dead. The whole world would not experience the power of eternal life. How many of you know that Jesus, in all that he does, he looks at us and he says, I went through that too. I experienced that too. I experienced that suffering too. I went through that pain too. I went through the molestation too. I experienced anxiety too. I experienced depression too. I went through all those things, but I kept going. I kept on moving. They were all around me. It happened again. Because you understand, if another Roman soldier saw a Jew, they could have just came out of a, str a struggle or a trial. They were obligated. The first mile. Again. And again. And again. And again. But how many of you know that the Lord gives us victory? Again. And again. And again. And again. And again, so we literally do not have an excuse because this is what Jesus does. He hangs on the cross and he asks this question. He says, Father, why me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. He's asking, why? Why? Why have you forsaken me? Why did you leave me like this? Why did you keep me out here like this? I just grew up in this family. I didn't know it was going to be all of this. I just gave my life to God. I didn't know it was going to be all of this. But he says, not my will, but your will be done. Then the Bible says that he gives up the ghost. He says, you know what? All the struggle, all the pain, all the suffering, all the depression, all the abuse that I've taken throughout my life was worth it if somebody gets saved. The moral of this story is not just for you, but the reality is the pain that you're going through is for your daughter. The pain that you are experiencing and you may have gone through the slaps and the hits that you took was so that your great great grandchildren can make it into heaven all of the things that you've gone through in your life it becomes worth it if only one person can see Jesus and tonight the word turn literally means this, that I have the power to go in a different direction. I have the power to shift up a moment where the enemy wanted to take me out. You can't take me out. The only thing you do is you just take me in deeper. I may not be where I'm supposed to be, at the moment but if you keep watching me development is going to happen because I have to be developed so that you can make it into the kingdom and so tonight there's literally two calls that I want to make there are some of you in the building tonight that can say Pastor Resty I've been slapped I'm carrying a seed of bitterness. I'm literally, and I feel it in the building. 
I'm carrying and I'm harboring unforgiveness because that person hit me and I never got up. I never went to them and said, you know what? I know you did this, but I love you anyway. I know you did this, but I, but I'm, but I'm, but I, but I appreciate, appreciate you anyway. I, I, I know, I know when we were younger, you know it and I know it, but I'm free now. I'm free. I'm delivered. Now, if there's somebody in the building that can say, I need to be free from this pain, from this suffering, from this thing I've been holding on to, from this thing that's been gripping at my mind, I want you to just raise your hand if you be honest in the building and just say, you know what? I have not turned the cheek, but after tonight, I am ready to turn the other cheek so that somebody can be saved and delivered. If that's you, just wave at me tonight. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. I see all of you that are here. Why don't you stand to your feet if that's you? Stand to your feet. Now I want you to walk to the altar because just like the Jews had an opportunity to turn it, this is your opportunity to take that step of the second mile. And if there's anybody else in the building today that you want to make a turn in your life, you don't know Jesus, you don't know who he really is, but you want to turn in a different direction. You want to go and do a 180. Why don't you raise your hand and just walk to the altar. I see you. Come on. Come on. Your father loves you. And he wants to help you to turn it. My God, tonight, I want you, as you're here, to understand this was the biggest turn that you've ever made in your life. This was the biggest walk that you've ever made in your life. Can we make some room for these people over here? That's come on, come on, clap your hands for all these people that are ready to turn their life to Jesus. We're going to pray for those of you that if you're giving your life to Jesus for the first time, just raise your hand if you're here. Just if you're giving your life to Jesus. That's it. I want you to repeat after me and say, Lord, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I thank you, God, that you didn't have to keep going. You didn't have to hang on the cross. But because of your love for me, you hung on the cross, but you didn't stay there. You went in a tomb, and then you rose on the third day. And because of that, and because of that, I give my life to you right now. You are my Lord and my master. And I thank you that because of this, I am saved. I am saved. I am saved from hell today. Somebody clap your hands and praise God for your new brothers and sisters that turned it. And for those of you that walked up and you said, I need help in the area of forgiveness. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. And the Lord wants to fully free you, fully free you from that level of depression that you're holding on to. And after tonight, I believe that God is going to turn this for your favor and God is going to cause you to be able to get up off the ground and to stand up as a man or woman of God. Come on, let's just pray for them. Father, we thank you. We praise you. 
and we glorify you for your awesome power. These people that are here, Lord, that need to turn it, turn it for their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to pray with them. Hallelujah. Come on. How many received that word tonight? Come on. Give God some praise if you receive that word tonight. Pastor Resty, with an awesome message. Church, we love you. Happy Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget this Sunday, we're going to be in the house. Pastor Marco's bringing a word. And this Sunday begins First Fruit Week. That means you can bring your first fruit offering this Sunday or throughout all of impartation. So this Sunday begins First Fruit Week. You can bring your first fruit offering or any one of the nights of impartation or that following Sunday. We love you. God bless you. If you need prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray with you. But have a wonderful night. Take care. Drive safely. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you.